Hey everyone, hello, hello. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art and I'm here to paint with you today again. So it is Happy Monday. I'm gonna get the week started off right because we're gonna be painting and being creative. So welcome and welcome. When you sign in, say hello. I can see people popping in now. I'm gonna pull you up on my computer as well. So if I can say hello to you or answer any questions. Tarita, thank you for watching. I'm gonna paint some cute little tiny canvases. Good morning, Barbara. Thanks for popping in. I love to see everyone. I love to paint, but I love to paint with you guys too. It's like painting with my friends and it is just so much fun for me. So this is my live segment on Craft Around the Clock. Also, I'm on my Tinker's Cart Art page. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Please say hello. Please say, let me know where you're watching from. That's always a thrill for me. I know my camera's slipping a little bit and I'm kind of getting off the screen. Hey, Lisa, thank you for watching. If it keeps moving, I'll tighten it a little bit. Um, yeah, so we're gonna paint some fun little canvases today. I've painted them lots of times and they're always one of my most popular um, uh, tutorial so I'm glad that you're here to catch it. Hey Lisa, hey everyone, Georgia. Oh, you are uh, pretty warm down there in Oregon. Oh boy, you're all right across the country. I'm in coming from you today from Maine um, and you've probably been watching my tale of moving. So I was in Massachusetts and we've just sold our house there and I will be coming to you this summer from Maine and this winter from Florida. Hey Patty, where in Mass are you? I just moved um, from Clinton up here to uh, summer in Maine. So uh, I'm pretty excited to be near the beach and pretty excited that it's actually sunny today. Can you believe it? We've had so much rain and I know everyone else has had crazy weather as well, but we have a sunny day today. So I'm going to hope to get to the beach maybe after my session. So, oh, hot red in California. Yeah. It's warm here, but I, I just am so happy to see the sun. So here we are. You guys have been watching all the great crafting today. Um, I was just watching Melissa a little bit. I was in the middle of one of those mornings where I was on. Hey, Tracy, thanks for sharing me in um, with tech support for my email platform. And it's been hours and days and days trying to resolve an issue. And we just finished, and I hope it's resolved literally two minutes before I came on with you. Oh my God, Cheryl, 118. Yes, we're not that warm. Um, although the ocean water is pretty warm here, very warm for, for Maine. And uh, so I'm gonna go down and check that out. And I don't know, I guess I'm kind of in some shade here today, but you'll be able to see my workspace. So that's what's important. So uh, I'm going to do some little canvases. You can buy these little packs of canvases at the craft stores. I've seen them at the dollar store, little packages. This is black canvas. You can get them black or white. Great for night scenes and whatnot. You can do a lot of fun things with uh, like the neon paints and the glow and, dark, and the dark paints on these little ones. They are, I think, three inches by three inches, so teeny. And they also, you can buy little packs of easels to set them on, and they come in black or natural. And I'll tell you, they're a cute, adorable gift. You know how you sometimes want to give somebody something that you created or crafted? but you don't know if they have room for it. Look at these little canvases are so cute. And there's a million ways you can paint them, but because it's summer and I'm here at the beach, I'm gonna do some beach scenes for you. I'm also doing a class in person soon with them. So these will be some good little samples as well. I have also sometimes used my modeling paste to do some dimensional painting on them. So it's just Liquitex Golden, different manufacturers make this modeling paste and I apply it with a palette knife and it's kind of like sculpting. So I don't know if I will have time to paint that one. If I don't, I'll do it another day, but I will definitely do the um, little canvases there. So, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just um, keep this from slipping, tighten everything up. Sorry, you probably don't need this close up of me here. But that way we can keep the camera kind of, kind of where it should be. And let's tip it a little bit. So I know they're teeny, so I'm gonna to try to keep lifting things up as I paint them to show you. This would be a good little project too if you wanted to use your paint markers. Look at my, I don't know what is up with this. Hang on, sorry, I don't wanna like, oh, I know what it is here. Let me just tighten that. If I was um, not on with customer support until the second before, I would have had this set up a little bit, but, but that's, that's great. Welcome, Dawn. I'm gonna put a bunch out because they're teeny. So we're gonna paint the, them sort of all at the same time. I'm gonna look at myself on the computer here to see that you can actually see what I'm doing. Just using regular acrylic paints. You can use your acrylic craft paint. I use different brands. I like the deco art. For my colors for the water, I love the phthalo blue and green from um, Liquitex. They're just a fluid acrylic. Ordinary 
brushes, not expensive. I've got mostly my synthetics here and my little bit of a bristle brush, which is a hog bristle. And this is gonna annoy me. Let me see if I can just pop that up on my water bottle maybe and make it a little better for you to see. Let's see if that works. I'm sorry, we don't usually have so much trouble with that. Um, yeah, so I do like sometimes a little bristly brush that it gives me some texture. You could even use, say you have an old brush that's your synthetic, but it's kind of sprayed out and in, in a little heavier. Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Daryl, and thank you for um, following me as well. I, I invite you all to take a look at social media and you'll find me in all the places Tinker's Cart Art. I love doing my lives here every week with Craft Around the Clock. I do lives on my page. I also have a lot of tutorials, free ones on YouTube. So take a look and I also have a private art membership. Um, so all the things. But little ocean scenes, we're going to paint on these. Like I said, I want you to get started painting. I don't want you to worry about having all the particular um, supplies get if you have some craft paint if you have some brushes pull them out for these little paintings you don't really even need fine fine details we're going to kind of do them with the bigger brushes and just dab on waves and things so let's jump in and get started so i do have a sample up here on my ipad that of ones i've painted you don't need a big tracing or anything on them i'm simply going to put on a horizon line where the sky is going to meet the ocean so we're going to do a little beach scene so really just a little horizon line a good rule of thumb you might know is if you're painting or designing you don't want to cut your canvas in half right across the middle you want to go a little below or a little above just a smidge just so you're not cutting your canvas in half i'm going up above the middle just a little bit and then i might give myself just a little line for where the water will be and then sand I might do one same way and put a little lighthouse in the corner. Lighthouses are a popular theme and uh, these are great even um, if you're doing craft fairs and art shows and things. This is a great item. It's nice to have your big paintings because those are great when you sell them, but to pay your table fees and your expenses, sometimes have a little item that you could, could um, sell quite a bit of. And that was perfect for these things. Hey Diana, hello my friend, how are you today? I think I'll do one with just waves and boats. And I have a little painting, a big painting I do a lot in my classes and my tutorials. And people love it. It's simple. It's a beach scene to, with hollyhocks on the side. So it gives you a little color. They could even be beach roses. So we'll do one like that that will have a little bit of floral element on the, on the side. So basically, they're pretty much all divided up with a little horizon line and a, with a sand in the water meet. Oh, good, good. Hello from Georgia. Hey, Catherine. Um, and then this is just going to have one little line. I'm gonna kind of paint them production style because if they're all gonna have skies, we can paint them all at once. I might do one as a night sky. So let's just jump in and do skies. Lots of times when I'm painting, I will work from back to forward, top to down maybe, but uh, back to forward so my little details can be the last things I throw on there. A lot of times I paint dark to light and you will see that if you go ahead and watch some of my classes and tutorials. So I'm gonna just paint in some skies, very simple. But it's the same way I paint big skies sometimes. So I'm taking my, um, I'm going to hold this back so you can see my palette. Sometimes it's nice to see my palette too. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of blue, mix it into some white, and get a light blue for the sky. I'm not spending a lot of time getting the right shade, and I'm going to mix it as I go. That's because I want it to look more natural. So when I go on, and these are little gallery wrapped canvases, so I'm going to start on the edges. Because if I start on the edge, whether it's a teeny canvas like this or a big one, it shows me the shade of blue I'm using. And it gives me an idea if that's too light, too dark, what I'm looking for. So I paint my edge first. And this shade of blue is fine, but I am dipping my blue into my white as I go along so that the shades of the blue is a little different and not a perfect flat shade. And I'm just going to use these little, I use kind of like a little crisscrossy stroke when I do my skies. I just want it to be painterly. I like seeing the brush strokes. I can dip right into white if I want and get more of a little cloud area. I might just take my brush on the chisel edge and go right across where I want my horizon line just to sort of get that in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do these little strokes. Now, sometimes your acrylic paint's a little transparent and you tend to see through it. That's why these little strokes being all every which way, even if there's a light area, you will still uh, look natural like sky. You don't have to go put lots of coats on. 
So I'm going to just dry my brush off sometimes on the paper towel and go straight into white if I want to make a little stronger cloud. And I, yeah, I think you can kind of see it. I, I, it's a little upside down, but I want to keep turning things. So I, I really quickly just put in a little white there. And from a distance, it's going to read as a cloud. I don't clean my brush off to do that. I just use my dirty brush, wipe it in my paper towel, pick up the white, because we never want a cloud that is so pristine and white that it looks like it's cut out and pasted on that won't look natural. And we'll go back on these and, and add little brighter bits, sometimes little bits of yellow into my cloud to make it look like it's a little sun shining. But for now, this is enough to make a little bit, oh, I should hold it down for you. So how rough and quick that is. Very easy and quick. That's, I'm gonna leave that one just as it is. And if we need to, like I said, when it's drier, we'll add just a little tiny bit of a brighter white, but some I might leave that way. And just to change it up, I'll do the same thing. A little bit of blue into my white, but I might use more blue. So I have a little bit of a darker blue sky this time. So let's just do our sky here. Just do the edge first, like I said, gives you an idea if the, if the blue's gonna work or be what you want. I'm using that dark blue still. Same way, a little bit crisscrossy strokes. Since this is such a darker blue, I might just go right over and around and leave some little holes maybe for clouds. Still, they're not gonna be bright white. They're gonna be a little blue white because we're using our dirty brush when we do them. S chisel edge, just make my line across. So that's where this is. Just I just put that blue on kind of quick. I'm gonna dry off my brush just on my paper towel again. Put all my devices plugged in here practically on my lap because, like I said, we just jumped on quick with the, uh, let's hope my email issues solved. So that's that. I've dried off my brush just on my paper towel, and I'll go in just a little bit white now. Let's see, you can see it back here better. And again, it's going to turn out light blue. That's what I want. I don't want a bright, bright cloud. And I'm just going to kind of use those same little strokes and kind of go right in, wet and wet. It's got the wet blue here. I'll dry that off and get fresh white. Tippy tops of the clouds, I like to have them a little brighter. And I'm just, because the blue is still wet, which is great, it allows me to blend a little bit. Keep drying off the brush. I'm just gonna soften it a bit and come back later and brighten it. Now, if you don't like the whole look of all the brush strokes and the painterly strokes like I like, that's fine because everybody has their own style. If you just keep drying off your brush and using that dry brush and softly just blend, you could get a nice, smooth, soft blend as much as you like by just keep drying it off and using the soft brush just to kind of dry, uh, smooth out everything. So I'm gonna leave that kind of like that and come in after it dries a bit, with just a little bit of brighter white, maybe on the tippy tops of those clouds. So that'll show you a couple different shades of blue, and let's do a softer sky that doesn't have all the puffy clouds. We'll just go back in. We're doing the same thing on our skies. And again, I do this on my big, big skies as well. It's sort of the same uh, uh, way I start. And you may, if it's a big, big canvas, you might, of course, put a little more detail in. Some, sometimes I use a purpley gray underneath. They're like more of a stormy rain cloud. Sometimes, like I said, I put a little yellow. We might do that on these. But on this sky, let's get our blue in on our edge again. Are we ambitious painting four paintings in 45 minutes, right? So we have until one o'clock. And you know I jump on half the time with no idea or rhyme or reason of what I'm doing. And it always seems to work out. We've pretty much finished everything. Hey, Carrie, good morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for watching. And I'd love it. Anybody just jumping in, please say hello. Tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what you like to paint. Tell me what you might want to see me paint. I'd love some suggestions today. I'm formulating some new paintings this month for my lives and for my membership. So please, if you have something you want to see painted, put it in there and I'll try to try to put that on my list of things. So this is pretty plain. We didn't put much for clouds, right? Just the blue background. I'm gonna dry off my brush, maybe take a little white. And this is just a few streaks, just a few streaks. You've seen skies like this, just a little bit of light here and there, and that's all we're gonna do for this one. You can see how simple some of these can be. Just little, looks like clouds off in the distance. You've seen them like that. And now, I wanna do a nighttime cloud uh, sky, <laughs> and that's gonna be fun because we can spatter some stars on there. So I'm gonna just dry off my brush because I have a lot of light blue on it. I want more of a navy dark blue. 
and I mix along my color. So I'll tell you what I'm mixing because I'm not going to get out a darker blue. But if you have a dark navy blue, use it. But I rather just um, take a little black into my blue or a little Payne's gray and make a navy gray. Okay, I think I, think I saw seashells go by. Yeah, idea. Yes, actually painting shells, but painting on shells. Um, I saw some cute shells in a little gift shop yesterday that was more the decoupage, which I know a lot of the craft and the clock, clock ladies have done, and I'm intrigued. And they decoupage the inside of the shell and then painted a little rim of a metallic gold in the bottom of the shell gold, and it really was really cute. So I have done painting of shells, but I haven't painted on the shells like that. That might be a fun idea, too. Oh, Carrie from Kentucky, thank you. Let's say for, for saying hello. Uh, I'd like to see all my peeps here. Okay, so again, I've mixed up black with just the blue, the phthalo blue, or whatever blue. You have an ultramarine, whatever you have. Add a little black. You can get a nice dark. I have to say, this, see this canvas here? It's not like really covered as well. It's not as nice. I have to say, the ones that I get at Michael's in the package seems to be a little nicer quality than the Dollar Tree ones. I picked up some at Dollar Tree. And I do find lots of cool crafting stuff there, but the canvases weren't as nice as I would like because I like it to be a little more finished on the edge there. But that's beside the point. Anyway, so I'm just doing a really dark blue sky there. And I'm going to just chisel edge or just go across, get my line there. And then I can just fill that in. And like I said, we're not going to worry too much about anything because we're going to spatter on some white paint to make stars here. And you can see how I'm mixing on my palette as I go again. That gives me a more natural look than mixing up a little pile of navy blue paint and just painting it on like I'm painting a wall. I'd rather have some lights and darker areas. And we just wanted to cover it in dark, so that's enough for that. Now I'll wash my brush because I have very dark paint and I will be going into some light colors. And I think I have some paper towels here, so I'm gonna grab one of these. I love to keep a paper towel in my hand a lot so that I can dry my brush as I go. So, let me, I feel discombobulated, you guys. I know I'm usually pretty uh, organized, so I hope I'm not coming across as like the nutty professor or anything, because I even just lost my brush I was just painting. Oh, it's in the water, see? I just, I need time to prep, and, and I literally said to the guy, I have to be on live in three minutes, and I have to finish this up, and, and voila, the problem was fixed, and it was ours, so I'm kind of glad. Hey, Debbie from Secondhand, how are you? My, you're my Florida neighbor now when I'm down there this winter. I cannot wait. I love Maine. I'm so happy to be here at the beach, but I'm antsy to get to Florida because we sort of moved in and outfitted the house and then left, and I just... And my brother and my brothers live in the neighborhood and my sister and son are down there so i can't wait to get back down oh before we paint the rest let's paint the stars on our sky oh thank you sally i love i love watching you guys watch me paint hi cam um if it was snow i would paint the whole canvas but we are doing stars so i'm just going to add a little water to my white paint get it a little watery using my old toothbrush and move all the things that you don't want spatters on because it travels. I have them on my computer everywhere. And just go back and look at now you've got a little starry sky. It's going to be a little glary maybe, but so we've got starry sky. I love, Cam, it's good to see you. Cam is uh, one of my uh, painter people. And I love to see your work. And Cam, you know that and everybody else. So please, um, on my page, share your artwork or your crafts. It doesn't have to be artwork. It could be whatever you're working on. I love to see it all. And Jenny from Michigan. Okie dokie. So we did skies. They're, these are dry. So I will go back now. And I like sometimes my little bristly brush for sky and waves. I'm going to just dip it in the very corner of the white paint. So I really just have white on just the corner of the brush. I might pat a little off if it's a big glob. But this is how I um, emphasize my clouds a little bit. So see, there they are. But I'm going to just, let's see if I can do it so you can see it. Because they're tiny and I want to feel like you, I want you to see it. I just kind of go across the top a little bit. It's not bad with I'm not even really looking at it. But see how it just kind of adds a little brightness to it? I know it's glary, but a little, a little bit on the top. And because I haven't loaded the brush load with just a little bit on it, it works for me. I don't have to blend or, or go back. I just take a little tiny bit. And now on this one, you'll see it much more because we have very light, wispy clouds. I like to go across the top and make them a little bit harsher edge. But I always want the bottom of my clouds to be soft and, and fade off into the distance because that makes them look more natural. So I'm just going to put a little bit on here. I'll lay it flat. Maybe you can, you can see it kind of upside down a little bit. 
And you can do this as light or as heavy as you want. And you could put just little wisps sometimes in. Sometimes on the edges here, I bring them out. I kind of do the little edge and bring it out so it's not just a perfect round. And that's probably plenty. And if I want to do a little yellow in there, I like to use the yellow ochre because it's not a bright yellow, it's more of a gold. Teeny spit, it's mixing in with the white on my brush because I want it to be very light. I'll just mix it light. And it's just a little brush here and there of a little bit lighter yellow look, not everywhere. And that almost looks a little harsh to me, so I'll take a little more white and I'll just go over it so it's just a little lighter and hardly there. And you've seen the clouds like that when they sometimes have a little sunshine in them. It just warms them up a little bit, which is kind of nice. So we have four skies here. I feel like it's like a, like a challenge, like a speed thing, like finish the four paintings in um, 20 minutes or something, but we will do it. So water is easy. I love my phthalo blue and green mixed for ocean color because you can, let's go ahead on, let's go on this one and just, I use strokes back and forth for water. Everything else I'm pretty much crisscrossy, but this is going to be back, I'm probably going to get paint on my new hat. Um, it, paint travels everywhere. And I would finish off your edges as you go. So you're going to finish off your edges and I'm just going back and forth and I'm dipping just into blue and into green back and forth. If I see it looks a little green, I'll add a little more blue back and forth. And then maybe a little bit of white in there just to lighten it up here and there. My trick to get to the sand is when you get close to where the sand's gonna be, just rinse your brush off and just go with white. Yes, Diana. It is the th Liquitex, the fluids, the phthalo blue and green. I love them for water. I use those two. That's about the only blue I use usually. And um, that this green with primary yellow is, you can make every shade under the sun. It's fabulous. So when I'm close to the shore, I'm gonna just go in with white and just kind of make it a little lighter at the tip there where it's gonna come, come aboard onto the sand. So there, it's just a little lighter. I'll make an easier blend when we have the sand there. And I'm going to do that on my other canvases. So this one here, let's go more Caribbean watercolor. So for that, I just go with my blue again and green, but more green and a little white. And you're going to get this beautiful shade of teal. See how it's really a pretty teal. You can make beautiful teal and turquoises with these two colors. And I'm going to use a little more white in my my uh, water here and I'm streaking it back and forth because it's water and it just works that you have these streaks. They they almost show as little white caps out there, waves. You don't want to put big waves that are turning over way out there because those um, would be closer to shore. Close to shore here, I'm getting it very light. And that one's ready for sand next. Now, our darker, let's do this one where it's blue sky. The dark one, we're gonna get a bit darker. I'm gonna grab a little more blue. Hey, Martin. I wish you were uh, next door here at Seaview with us. Are you guys coming down this summer? Um, again, it would be fun to see you. Although we've had nothing but rain all season, but it's sunny today. Okay, more, more water. Back and forth across. I'm going to go a little bluer this time. And that's the fun thing. You can just mix it up when you're doing four or uh, multiples like this. You're painting them kind of the same, but you can make them very different. And those, yes, Denise, these colors are fabulous for the beach, really are. And I'm gonna keep wiping that off because now I really wanna get a little more white towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit darker shade of water here, because that's gonna be nighttime. And these guys are pretty well to where we're gonna put sand on them. So let's leave those. I'll go back and show you how to do some little waves too. This one, same thing, only I'm going to get a little less white, maybe no white in that water. Well, a little. It's just For now, it's just the blue and green. See how much darker I'm doing it this time. It looks very blue, so I just would go jump in with some green. And that's what I do. I eyeball it. It's like, if it's too green, I'll add blue. If I like it, I'll leave it. But if I just want a little lighter, I'll add white. But I still, actually, you know what? We're going to do the water right down on this one in no sand. That way we can put some nice waves in this one. So let's just do this all the way down. So all we've used so far is the green and blue. I'm going to dry off my brush now. And now, like we did on the clouds, I'm going to take a tiny bit of white on the corner. One of the brushes there again. And I could go back and forth. And like I said, we have 
bigger waves down here. Back here, I could simply just drag my brush off across here and there. I don't sometimes want to go one solid line across and divide my painting in half. I want to almost do smaller little strokes here and there. But when I'm down close and the waves are a little bigger, I'm going to go with that same white, but I'm going to start maybe like this. I'm going to press and press and press and just get a bit of a wave. Now, without even me adding all the details, which I'll add a little more, it looks like a wave already, simply by a little tiny bit of white and drag it across. And I press my brush a little bit, make it a little thicker, and then lift it and go. And then you get these little waves that look like they're turning over. These, this would be cute painted on some seashells. If you got some of the bigger ones, painted a little ocean scene on there. I think that would work nicely too. Uh, so we've got our water all over here. I am going to, I don't need to rinse my brush actually because I've got the blue green, but if I want some bigger waves on the lighter skies, same thing, I'm going to, I could, let's see if I can do it upside down and backwards. And uh, to show you, it's so simple because you want a loose um, grip on your brush and you don't want to be doing little detail bits. You're just going to kind of I start with a, like a little line. I press the brush a little so I can get those thicker lines and then I kind of bring it across. I don't even know what that looks like yet, but it could be working into a wave, right? Because I really can't even see it. I'm just kind of painting and pressing and painting. We'll make them into waves though. Because I like to put a little bit of that really lime greeny color under the wave as it's turning, you know, at the beach when you see the light shining through and sometimes it gives you that green cast. Pretty cool. And sometimes I want just a soft little you know, not big waves, but just these little lines across. So that's enough for there. This one's kind of blah. Let's do something there. And it's a little crooked. My horizon line is a little crooked. I'm going to straighten that out because it will bug me. And I'll just straighten that out with just my brush, my flat brush on the chis chisel edge. It's better. And let's get some little lines back in the distance there. There's some lights and darks. Again, whenever I pick up the white paint, I'm just putting it on the tip, and that gives me a nice thin line. And let's get it a little bit more action down here, closer to the shore. And we'll do some more to that. So for the sand, this guy we're going to keep up here, the dark one, because that's just water. Can you see? Let me get them close. I guess closer to me is better for you to see. Let me see over here. Get them so you can see them actually little magnets. You could put magnets on the back of these too, so that would be kind of cool. Alrighty, now let's get the sand in them that we need sand, and I'll show you to blend. You want kind of a soft blend of the sand going into the water, the water coming over the sand. You know at the beach when that water comes over the sand, you see the sand really through it. So I use this um, buttermilk color by DecoArt. It's just an ivory, and I use that for sand to start and then I add a little sometimes of the yellow ochre. I use some white because I don't want it to be just all one color. I want to throw in lights and darks while the paint is wet. So for now we're just going to paint in that sand color where we want it basically. And I might as well just do all three because the paint will stay wet long enough for me to kind of work with those three. A lot of times I like working wet and wet. That gives me a nice blend. But you have to be a little quick and the weather depends on the weather a little bit sometimes. But if I'm doing a wet in wet blend like this light blue against the sand and it's dry, that's dried, I can just re-wet it and work it. So I'll show you all those little techniques. So a little bit of this yellow ochre in there maybe just so it looks like maybe some shadows, maybe the sand's been walked in. It's just not this solid color. We just want a little action with some, something that will be interesting for our eye to look at. So we want some lights and darks. So I've got some darks in there very simply. Like I said, these are very simple small paintings, but these techniques will work on bigger paintings. I do big like four and six foot long uh, rectangle canvases with just a little beach scene. And, and you'd be surprised how simple you can paint it and how quickly you can pop on the waves and add some details and step back and look and it looks what, like what you want. Remember, step back. No one's looking this close to them. You need to be at a distance to view your paintings. Just what I did with that yellow ochre. I'm going to go in with a little white now. Same thing. And just, just kind of popping it in there. Maybe blend a little bit. Just, just have fun with it. Have fun with it and it will show. If you struggle and with a little brush and really thinking about where you're putting this stuff, it'll show as being tight and detailed. And if you have fun and just splash the strokes on, 
which is so fun on a big painting. I'm doing a little of that here, but these are kind of tiny. But yeah, just have fun with it. That's the best. Oh, hey, Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks for popping in. Now, these are blended almost pretty well without trying, but I'm going to go back now, and I don't care that there's a little bit of the ivory on my brush. I'm going to get that light blue again, the light watercolor, and I want to get it more on the light side because when that water comes on the sand, it's not dark blue anymore. And it's kind of uh, wet down here, so I'm going to just kind of lightly go in, and can you see how it's starting to look like the water that's coming up on this sand and I go in with some more white and just kind of blend that in. I might take another brush because I want that darker color at the same time. So I'm just going to take this brush, not that dark, and I'm, going, I'm just going back and forth. So when I need to blend something like this, I'm going from the color at the top, wet, re-wetting it, bringing it into the wet sand color, and then I can also use the lighter brush and go back up into it. And now you've got that look of it coming onto the sand a nice blend. I'd go back and do the same thing with a little bit heavier white maybe so it's just some little ripples of it coming down. And same here. We just need to re-wet because if this watercolor was still wet we could just do the blend but it's a little dried so we are just going to quickly just re-wet it a little bit and I'm just kind of going quick with the colors that it's close to a light blue. This is more the green and now I've got my light color on here. I had a little bit of the sand color and a little white and I'll just go and blend those two together and then it just gets to be a little softer. I just like the way that blends. Can you see how little effort I'm putting into it though? It's just, just that's enough. And I always do go back and add a few little white lines just to make it look like it's the little ripples of the water. So see how it like it's kind of kind of right up on the sand. I know these are teensy but Anyways, it's still fun. Same here. We'll just put a little bit of the white coming up on the sand. It's not going to stay white because I've got that dirty brush. But there, I mean, these could almost be little paintings already, but we're going to do a little more because we have 12 minutes, 13 minutes, so we can keep playing around. So what I want to do is show you a little bit how I put a little detail into a wave. And you can imagine that if it's a bigger wave, you would see it more. But I like a really lime green. So let me get a yellow. So the primary yellow mixed with that phthalo green, you get beautiful shades of green and lime green and apple green and all the colors, which I know I like to go buy them all too. And I do have an array of colors here, but I do like to when I'm painting with you guys to show you how easy it is to mix from your primary colors and you don't need all of them. Tiny touch of that green into the yellow and you get some beautiful, you see that beautiful lime green? Under the wave, like I said, sometimes under the wave here, you get a little bit of that green. I just kind of pop it in to start. It's just a little bit of that lime green under there. I'm just going to put it a little bit there. Sometimes I take it with a little white because it gives it a little more opacity. And sometimes I just streak it in the water here and there too. I don't want it quite that light, but sometimes I'll streak that in here and there. Just like a little glint sometimes if the sun's shining. I don't have any real big waves here, but I'm going to put some of that lime green in. I'm going to thin it down with, uh, lighten it up with white a little bit, a little more yellow. And I might accentuate these waves a little more. So can you see I've gone a little bit lighter and greener on these little waves. I'm just going to pop that in really lightly hardly any paint on my brush so when I kind of scumble it on I don't have to even blend it too much. I'm not putting a big brush load that I then have to smooth out. I'm just kind of very light touch. Light light touch so that when you're doing that you have that light touch. If you have to do it again that's fine. I'd rather have you put it on and hardly see it. I know Diane you'd be so happy with those colors. I love if you just got three the primary yellow not cad yellow but the primary yellow is really pure and it mixes with those two colors beautifully. And uh, we're always looking for like our favorites, but this is, they've always been a great a favorite of mine. I'm going to add some of that green to most of my waves here. And you'll start looking at waves differently when you're at the beach, not noticing all the colors in the waves and how, it, how they just move. It's really kind of interesting to study them. I take short videos of a lot of the waves breaking 
it's you think it's so detailed and hard to paint and it and it can be intimidating but you have to just simplify it all and just kind of squint and look at the lights and darks and that would um really help you with seeing things and not get bogged down with all the details i have this little cushion here can you see i'm all squirmy i'm trying to get like it's, i'm a little too low in the chair so i have this little cushion um these would be a great little display in the bathroom wouldn't they um and they're so cute when you have them done on your little easel but I want to show you how I can quickly do a full moon if you want on that dark background. Now, of course, you know yellow is going to not really show up that much, but if you do it in white first, you'll have a nice, nice coverage. And this very, I like doing it with a little bit of a bristly brush again, but you can use any brush that you have really for this technique. It works great for sun and moons and just a quick little technique. And I'll start it now because we need the white to dry a little bit. So let's do that, and then we'll put a maybe a lighthouse over here or something, maybe some rocks. Yes, all in nine minutes, too. Thank you, Denise. I, I don't know if I should buy a white hat, to be honest, because honestly, you, there'll be paint on this, too. But thank you. I do like it. I'm not a pastel girl at all, so it's a little weird for me, but I like it. So I've just taken my hog bristle brush. I've dipped it into my white paint. I simply just plop it on where I want that little moon. And I spiral it out. Why I'm doing this is because I like to have all those little, uh, see the edges are kind of um, scumbly and uh, just the paint's gone from the brush and you have that little texture, which I kind of like. And if I have to, I do it twice, but this might cover enough. I'll just do it with yellow afterwards. We'll let that dry a bit. I can use the same brush and go back in and really accentuate those waves a little bit, or you can even use a little flat. Let me try that to show you. Oh, thank you, Sue. Thank you. So I, just again, it's just in the corner of the brush, right? Pat it down maybe a little bit. You don't want a big glob of paint. And then I sort of start my waves just like we did, but I'm going to go over them a little more. I just kind of press down a little bit, maybe a little heavier on the top, and I drag them out to the side. So it kind of goes out to the side. I get that little white. And then I can bring some down that are even kind of breaking afterwards. You can put a little spray in there with some little dots. If it was a big painting, I may take my toothbrush again on top of a big wave and spatter. So there's a couple little waves there. And you can always throw some in without the green because they're nice to have some just like that. So a little further back, they're going to get smaller and smaller. You wouldn't see waves breaking back here like that close. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to go back to where I did my waves and just make a little heavier white, a little more blobby. And I'm just reloading kind of every time. Press it, press. Use the texture of the brush to be kind of raggedy. And this one's pretty much, we're doing kind of the same thing. So maybe we'll put a lighthouse on this one quickly if we can. And I always take pictures afterwards and go back to the comments. So if you have questions, throw them in there because I'll go and look at them later. And the recording will be up, so you'll find the recording as well afterwards. If you've had to leave or you just signed in or you missed it all together, let me know if you're watching on the replay. Okay, so, and if I want sometimes to have like where the water's coming up on the sand, like almost little ripples, I just kind of go in with my brush and do this sort of thing. See those little ripplies that I put in there? And it's almost like the water's just clear at that point, so it's just white is going to be fine with that. And I hope to get to the beach shortly and take some photos, because that's always fun. Now it's little, so you might not do that on this, but just to show you, you could always take your white on a bigger wave, and you could make it look like it's kind of breaking and coming over. You know how that sort of happens. I just use some, some squiggly squiggly line sometimes. Sometimes I just take and do little tiny spatters up here. This is teeny, I know, but uh, on a bigger painting, you could get like little bits of, see how I got a little spray there? Little sparkles in the water sometimes. If it's really a sunny day, it wouldn't work there, but here it could be very sparkly. You could just almost, I just do little dots and little sparkle lines. I'm going to show you those in a minute, but you can just do little, see the little dots? This makes little sparkles. That's so much fun. I do that with a lot of my little paintings. And yeah, you could go to town with like, once this is dry with little, little bits of line work. Not a lot, because it is fluid in its water and you don't want to be too line worky, but can you see how I just sort of did a little bit of 
line work on top of those little waves there. And this guy here, we would just go in now, and maybe not with straight um, yellow, but a little white mixed because the yellow is, of course, um, uh, transparent. So if I take a little dab of yellow into with some white and just dab it in the middle here and just spiral again. And it doesn't have to be covered perfectly. That's really huge moon. But see how you know, it's a little bit, um, I forget the word I want to use, like lighter on the edges. And I would, I like spirals and I love incorporating spirals into my designs and paintings. So I would just take straight white now tap it in the middle and just spiral out because this is a whimsical little painting this doesn't have to be really super realistic so I just put a little spiral in there if you wanted some little stars that are just a little bigger than others I would just maybe dot a few in and you know what else you could do is a little constellation now I know this is teeny but on other paintings I'm always after people put little constellations in so there let's try to squeeze in a lighthouse in four minutes so what I would do is I would take a corner of my painting perhaps and I might want to squeeze a brown. It's, I'm just going to blob in some rocks for the lighthouse to sit on. So I would just take some black and some brown and I would almost just build a little place of rock. So all I did was with a little square brush just dabbed in those shapes and then you just need a little highlight. Now remember rocks have all colors in them. I'm going to I would put blue in here. I could put any color little gold but for now I'm just going in and dabbing white I can finesse it a little bit later but let's just see what we can do in just this little bit of time we have lost some of my darks and I just dab in it's almost like I'm building the rock wall with the little brush so for distance I might put a little blue in there too but just kind of make some rocks and then for the lighthouse I paint it in white first which again probably needs a couple coats but hey we have three minutes so white, a little clean white, and I would just do, you know, a little, I just did it kind of with one stroke. I like the flat brushes in the different sizes. I could use them for leaves and things. So I would just take my flat brush that's about the size that I want it. I would start this and then I will just spread the brush a little more so it's a little heavier down there. Now, you can certainly go back with any brush and touch that up. Little little detail brush, whatever, get the right shape. It's kind of a little precarious top on this little rocks that I built because it probably needs to be a little bit more, you know, a little more stable for our lighthouse, say. For the top of a lighthouse, if it is daytime, I just take the white again, a tiny little bit. I want it to be see-through here, so I make it a little see-through at the top. Seems like a see-through. If you want to take a tiny bit of yellow in the middle, you can. And then it's simply a little cap, a little triangle cap. This is really pretty basic. Looks like a little soldier, but a little cap. Then a little round ball on the top. I'm doing this kind of rough, you know that, because we've only got two minutes. I put a little railing around. They have like a little fence thing. This is very wonky, but that's all right. We're just going to go with it. And they have a red stripe usually. Well, they don't usually, but a lot do. And I, the one I like to paint has red stripes. This is a little wet, but I would let it dry. But really, same little square brush. I just curve a little bit. Curve a little bit. I would put maybe a little door in there, a little square door. A couple of little windows. I would shade maybe the edges to get a little bit of darker so that it looks rounded. If I just put a little wash of gray down the side, you can see how loose this is. But it's a quick little um, lighthouse, and I will I will touch that up a little bit, but I didn't want to not finish it for you. And so, look at our little masterpieces already, right? Like, how cute is that? You could write the name in the sand down here if you want to personalize it. Don't forget to sign them. You can add little details on these with um, Posca or paint markers, which would be cool. So you get the little packages, like I said, what does it come with? Like four little easels and then four little canvases. There's some even smaller than this. The three by three is about as small as I go. 
I have to hop off because you have to tune in for the next crafter. So what you're going to do is just wait a minute, refresh your page on Craft Around the Clock, and you're going to see the next crafter. I love it that you joined me. I will see you soon. Thank you, guys.